It's a film which asks a really important question. Just how far would a government go to remain in power? Yes, we're talking about V for Vendetta, and this is Science 5. V for Vendetta was based around the graphic novel written by Alan Moore, which was originally published between 1982 and 1985, and was inspired by the divisive Margaret Thatcher political era in Britain at the time. By contrast, the film was released in 2005, which was, somewhat poetically, in response to the George W. Bush political era in the US, even though the film itself is still set in the UK. What makes the film a fascinating piece of drama is its uniquely dystopian setting, whereby the fascist Norse Fire government has taken control of the UK after the fall of the USA due to a global catastrophe. As is often the case with corrupt regimes of this nature, they restrict the movements and freedom of the people and as a consequence outlaw anything which potentially threatens their authority, whilst increasing both profits and power for the individuals involved. Yet it's how the Norse Fire Party got into power which is the most frightening aspect of the story. In this instance they released a deadly virus among the population which first had to be created then tested on its own people via experimentation. Once a massive amount of deaths had been reached, Norse Fire was then able to appear as saviours after providing the antidote which in turn allowed them to take control of the country. Despite the motion of this could never happen in reality, it rather sardonically sounds eerily familiar to a certain pandemic which impacted the world in the early 2020s. One of the interesting facets of the film is that everyone is addicted to television and they effectively believe everything that they're told, which of course V uses to his advantage later on. Now can you imagine what it would have been like if social media had have existed at that point? V could have sent out his message to millions upon millions of people all from the comfort of the shadow gallery with just one simple tweet. With regards to V himself, there is definitely an argument to be made as to whether his false imprisonment in Evie was entirely justified. Considering Evie initially portrayed V to the bishop, there could be a school of thought to suggest his incarceration and mistreatment of her was indeed an actual form of punishment, as opposed to what he was really trying to ascertain, which was her loyalty to him and her ability to overcome her fear of the world around her. Yet regardless of his motives, despite the overall success of her conditioning, ultimately it pushed her away from him rather than towards him, which could prompt the question as to whether it was all worth it. Fortunately though, Evie did return to V for the film's grand finale. From a practical film production standpoint, the character of V is a unique example where carefully crafted lighting and photographic angles are able to successfully convey his emotion and mood. Moreover, the film's decision not to remove his mask at any point should also be applauded. However, the really big question to ask is what happens after the film ends? Sure, Parliament has been destroyed and Chancellor Sutler has been removed from power, but how much will actually change regarding Norse Fire's authority? A fact which even V himself is uncertain of early in the film. Furthermore, it's not made clear if the creation of the St. Mary's virus at Larkhill, which Norse Fire were directly responsible for, will ever be known to the public, which really would end their reign. Funnily enough, if there's one thing that totalitarian governments have on their side, is that there's no one to replace them if they suddenly disappear. Unlike the Rebel Alliance from the Star Wars universe, or District 13 from the Hunger Games, if Norse Fire really did collapse that night, then the whole country would be in total anarchy. With that in mind, one of the flow on effects of the film has been the real world impact of the stylized Guy Fawkes mask which V wears. Now viewed as a symbol of anti-establishment and government conformity, the mask is a constant feature in real world protests and demonstrations, which David Lloyd, the illustrator of the original V for Vendetta graphic novel, actively supports. However, what's truly ironic is that in the film V wants to destroy Parliament because it represents a symbol of an unjust system that suppresses society. So its destruction will empower the idea of change through the people, which is exactly what the mask now symbolises in the real world. Finally, in what is one of the best and certainly most unexpected subplots of the film, is when we get to learn the story of Valerie, who is a woman directly impacted by the government takeover by the Norse Fire Party. From her imprisonment at Larkhill, where she is subsequently experimented on with a viral agent, she details her life in a memoir which is read by Evie. It's a very powerful sequence and a true masterclass of storytelling. In the end, V for Vendetta is a fantastic movie which contains a really poignant message about governments trying to have too much power over their people. At the very least, you now know the relevance of November the 5th and why it is so significant. And while you wait for that date to arrive, be sure to join us again on another Sci-Fi Spective.